Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, Talking Geek is Only. Today's video is going to be a my thoughts on Transformers Rise of the Beast. As usual guys and girls, this is going to be a bit of spoiler, so spoiler alert. 3, 2, 1, you all have been warned. And as always, the trailer, why I will talk over it. I've just watched this today, this afternoon. And yeah, it took me a bit of time to get home because Today's the hottest day in uh, London this year, so I enjoyed a bit of the sun, try to get a, a suntan. Yeah, so anyway, Transformers Rise of the Beast, so um, what is it, this is the seventh movie? Correct me if I'm wrong, it's hard to keep up to date. The last one was uh, Bumblebee, which was kind of like a soft reboot or something like that, it was prequel, a prequel to the Michael Bay ones, which I've only seen it once and it was okay, yeah, to be honest, I kind of forgot everything about that mostly. The only thing I remember was like, uh, I think it was set in the late 80s, if I'm correct, at John Cena, which wasn't a bad film for what it was, you know, a low budget and so on. One good thing was they kind of put back the kind of classic designs, you know. And that was one of the things a lot of people kind of complained about the original, original ones. Me personally, I didn't mind the, the new designs. He was a... Kind of almost like a reimagining for the movies. You know, you're going to expect some changes for the movies. And I know a lot of people kind of got kind of bored with the Michael Bay because they was making a ton of loads of money, especially in Asia. See, the first one, I actually didn't mind. I actually thought it was a pretty decent film. In the second, the third, uh, I mean... I did see them in cinema. I tell you, I didn't see the last Michael Bay one. I waited till that came on Blu-ray and then or streaming. I can't remember how I watched it. I enjoyed the first one, to be honest. Um, it was a, it wasn't a big, big movie. It was kind of like a, basically had a mid-range budget if you compare it, and so on. I liked it. A few things I didn't like the original one was about the design of Megatron. Apart from that, the others were pretty good. And so with the Rise of the Beast, I saw the trailer. It wasn't amazing, it wasn't bad, it was just a regular, regular, decent trailer. Uh, I'm glad they kept the kind of more classic design, especially Optimus Prime. Peter Cullum, Cullum, Cullum is an amazing voice. You can't have Optimus Prime without him voicing it. And I think overall the voice for the, the Beasts and the Transformers were pretty good. Uh, I like the inclusion of the, the other Transformers like RC, um, Mirage. Speaking about Mirage, when I first first saw the trailer, I actually thought it was Jazz. If you were class, if you up to date with the classic G1 Transformer cartoon back in the day, Jazz was a Porsche. And they're kind of a shame because if I remember correctly, Jazz died in the first movie killed by Megatron. And Jazz was actually one of my favorite Transformers. I think he was like second in command in the cartoons. So I actually thought Mirage was a Jazz. And yeah, you know, Jazz, I like Jazz, he's a voice actor, I thought he's great, you know, the kind of comedic, comedic uh, relief in the, in the movie. And you have some pretty big names like uh, Michelle Yeoh, his voice is in there, Paul, Paul um, Perlman, oh boy, you know, he voiced uh, the gorilla, so some pretty good voices in there. And I like Unicron, Unicron, because I remember the Mark Wilbur one kind of ends with Unicron, I think Unicron was Earth or... Something like that. No, I barely remember. This one, Unicron, actually looks like the the, the cartoon, you know, the, the movie. So I like that. I kept. I like. I, I like the way they kept that. As for Scourge, I didn't like Scourge's design. It looked too much like Megatron. I think I just didn't like Scourge. I thought I don't know something about Scourge. I didn't like. Uh, it starts off in a planet where it seems to Earth had a beast, and Scourge was hunting them down for the key. This key. It's like a, it generates a time portal, not time, you know, like a wormhole to travel the universe in instant speed to get Unicron, Unicron to the planet and devour it and um, absorb its energy. That's how it feeds. If you're familiar with uh, Marvel comics, similar to, similar to uh, Galactus. So they protect the key and they fight Scourge. Scourge, you know, they escape the Beastmasters. And so this is meant to be set like years ago before Earth, I suppose, right? And then they escape, they escape to Earth. So it kind of made me thought, think when I first watched it, they were kind of like the 
an influence of the evolution of nature because you had the cheetah, you had the gorilla, you had the kind of eagle, kind of really earth like animals, you know. So, anyway, fast forward to 1994. So, this was set about a decade after Bumblebee. I hope, I think it's still in the same universe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've not really done much uh, research on Transformers. Uh, I think it's, like I said, it's a prequel to the Michael Bay ones. So I was set in 1994, and one thing I do like about the 90s is I do miss it, is the hip hop, hip hop, hip hop tunes. You now, today's world, too much EDM in the house and all that kind of music, and that good today, but it's just so good to listen to some 90s hip hop. So that was a pretty good soundtrack. Yeah, so it starts off, uh, you know, in New York, um, brothers looking after the kid, you know, trying, you know, going for an interview, but also taking his kid brother to the hospital, they can't, you know, typical, they can't afford it, and the brother had, you know, fallen on luck, he's, I think he's a soldier, he is a soldier, and um, yeah, he's not reliable, he came back to uh, look after his brother, so they, you know, don't have no money, he's, he's trying to get a job, he didn't get a job, he got cancelled because... Mm -hmm. Uh, the security manager said that, you know, you're unreliable and so on. So he kind of hooks up with uh, one of his neighbours, one of the friends from, uh, around the neighbour sort of thing. And they kind of like, what his charity where all the rich people are and they're trying to steal a car. And uh, the, name, the main guy, Noah, he um, steals a, the Porsche and that's Mirage and that's where the, all the action uh, kicks in. If there's one thing about these movies, I've always, um, just like Godzilla movies, this movie is, how do you say it? I personally don't care about the human um, human parts. As long as it's okay, bit of story, decent character, bit of a joke here and there. I think that some of the problem with the later trans Michael Bay movies was just too, a lot of it was focused on human. This one, they didn't focus too much on humans, but the bit where they focus on humans was actually pretty interesting. The characters were funny. I mean, the acting was not. I mean, you don't you don't go to these movies to watch um, Oscar performance actors, do you? The so acting was alright. Some of the dialogue was actually quite funny. I thought you know the main actor actress you know, did a decent job. Uh, the woman was called Eliza. E ah, you know what? I can't remember. I got such a bad memory. They're both pretty decent. One of them works in the museum. That's where she comes through the artifacts and finds finds out about the key and so on. So Optimus and them lot are stranded on Earth from the previous movie, and they find out about this key, and this is their way home to Cybertron because they opened, like I said, a wormhole next planet, and so on. So they kind of have kind of work together, and I think also. This is a bit where Prime, remember this is a prequel, so Prime doesn't um, doesn't um, trust humans yet. So it's kind of almost like a bonding between Noah and uh, the Transformers, Oscar's Prime, how they trust each other and so on. So that people trust, they work together as you would expect. And yeah, but the good thing, one thing I did like was the action. I mean, a Transformers movie without a car chase is not Transformers, so good that the, the car chase is really good didn't know you might have seen the trailer where noah was trying to steal mirage and mirage drove off and that was, that was actually pretty fun it's also pretty you know nice photography you know like the way it zooms out on the bridge and i thought it was a good car chase the action sequence are really well done one of the big big things i hated about the michael bay ones especially after part one part two three and four whatever was that i found it the action was so close up it gave me a headache. This one, at least, it kind of gives you the whole picture of the action. You know, it wasn't too fast cut. It wasn't too close to the camera. This one's actually pretty good. Special effects are okay. Uh, there's some really good bits. Some, you know, rushing. You know, I don't know how big the budget was. I don't think it was a, a massive budget. Massive budget. This Transformers has lost a lot of um, kind of, you know, how do you say, popularity in the last few years because. One of the reasons why the Marco Bay one was kept and going because you know the international market they made it. I think a few of them went over a billion dollars. This one I don't see that probably around the six hundred, maybe push it at six fifty. Lucky seven hundred million, but I doubt that. You're talking maybe five hundred, six hundred million dollars all right box office. Uh, a few criticisms I think that um, yeah. <laughs> 
the the science, uh, like I said, the, the main actress in there who is possibly like the Indiana Jones who discover all these kind of artifacts and languages. They go to this Peru uh, because, yeah, I'm going all over the place. The key has been split into the first fight was in in New York, uh, the museum, and then a you know, big fight with Scourge. And that was actually pretty decent. Crime loss. Bumblebee's obviously died. Spoiler alert. And they have this, the no, half of the key. You report back to Unicron. Unicron was pissed off. And Scourge has to find the second half. And due to the archaeologist, um, or the doctor scientist, whatever she's called, reading all these manuscripts and, and discovers in Peru, they go to this church, because apparently under the church were built on the ancient temple or city. And they go to the courtyard, sneaking through a, like a, a, a festival or something, and blend in, they go into the church in the, in the courtyard, and a big round kind of table, and then, oh, she works it out, bang, 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 and things open. I mean, it was just a bit convenient for me. I mean, I love a bit of archaeology, and one of some of my favorite films are Indiana Jones, for example. And I loved it, like, how they work things out, how they discover things. It's so easy, just twist here, twist here, and suddenly the hole opens and the, you go underground, and a lost city. You'll think, <laughs> you'll think, I mean, you say to me for the last 5,000, no one's worked out. I can't believe that. That was, that was a bit annoying. I remember I, watched, I was in the cinema going, you're telling me no one worked this out in the last 5,000 years? You come along just like a record player, just moved it here, moved it there, and suddenly the doorway's open. It's like, I mean, these, I mean, I know these films are like, not meant to be kind of, you know, based on reality. It's pretty just kind of, kind of like, Spend reality, no, suspend reality and say, yeah, this is it, this is it. They needed to, they needed to keep the story going just to get the action going, but which is good. I mean, the action was really good, like I mentioned. Yeah, the ending, I felt that it was a bit all over the place. It's a, it kind of like a CGI fest. Um, one good thing was, is I think it was, it harks back to the, the animated movie because um, Mirage was like getting his car, ass kicked in by um, so Scourge. I don't know, you think he was dying. But of course uh, he didn't. Then he kind of almost like transforms into a suit for Noah. That kind of you know, like harks back to the suit that um, Spike and his kid in Transformers have that kind of suit. Kind of reminded me of that a bit. The design was okay, I suppose. Action scenes, like I said, ending kind of dragged on too much, too much CG. But overall, it's not a bad film. I like the soundtrack because it was 90s hip hop, my kind of cup of tea then. Yeah, but overall, it was not a bad film. It was, you know, what it is, right? I liked the way the fact they kept it pretty small. Another, another pet peeve as well was there wasn't enough Transformers. <laughs> there was like, what, Bumblebee, RC, uh, Mirage, and I can't remember the other ones now, like six or seven. So there wasn't, I wanted a bit more, maybe. They probably didn't have the budget to do that. So maybe in the next one. And also stay to the, not the end, end credit, but the kind of like the kind of mid credits. There's a little, um, a little scene. I'm, I'm hope, I'm not sure. I mean, if it was a younger me, I would have loved it, but you know, it's going to be like a crossover between a G.I. Joe. I mean, I'm a big fan of G.I. Joe back in the eighties, but both movies of G.I. Joe was rubbish. I hated them both. So who knows? Huh? I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but it's not like I'm, Dying to see it, isn't it? Because the G.I. Joe movies is just rubbish, the Transformers kind of run So, so. But you know what? If they do make it, I'll watch it. So, yeah, looking forward to that as well. If if, if it makes money, hopefully would, they would do it. So, overall, it's not a bad film. It's not as you've got some time to spend, go and watch it. It's not going to blow up, you know, like I said, 500, 600 million max, I think. I'll probably give you about maybe a 5 out of 5. So, it's not a bad film. You know, um, I would probably, if you have nothing to do, yeah, watch it. It's not a bad film, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't blame anyone waiting for like streaming or something like that. It's one of those films you can probably miss and not miss much, you know. Anyway, like I said, five out of five. So anyway, until next time, thank you for uh, staying to the end. Until next time, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world, and please stay safe. Goodbye.